One of the things we've noticed, like we did a clinic last week in Kentucky. I think we had six churches come. There were maybe 19, 20 pastors that, that were there. We went out and did on the job training three times uh, in Corbin, Kentucky. And I think it was something, if I'm remembering right, it was something like 60 people heard the gospel and 29 prayed to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Um, we frankly have not seen much change in the statistics from 1962 when the ministry started into today. The, the difference that I see is that you will, people will say things today to you that they didn't used to say. A more polite day, people wouldn't have said, get off my lawn or, you know, things like this. You know, what can we do to encourage Christians that the gospel is in fact powerful? You're a pastor of a church. You have people sitting in your pews. What can we do to encourage them to get out and to, to be this salt and light, to be these witnesses that Christ told us to be? Well, I'm, I'm, con I'm convinced that most Christians love evangelism as long as somebody else is doing it. They, they want to see people come to Christ. They, they, I mean, that's been, I think, my impression. I, I think the reality is, is that churches, uh, pastors and church leaders, they need to uh, help their church be intentional, to intentionally engage their unchurched neighbors, their uh, their community. And so, so I, 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 my experience has been as a pastor, you mentioned I serve as a pastor, uh, my, my, my impression is, is that it's best to say to people, here's what we're going to do together. And so, uh, you know, to, to develop a, a resource, develop a strategy, and to congregationally equip individual believers to engage their communities as evangelists. And so, so you know, of course, I'm a, I'm a believer in EE, and so those, those kinds of approaches will enable us to, to train people better. And, and here's the thing, um, when, they, when they practice by sharing, sometimes with strangers, it makes them more likely to share the gospel with neighbors. And, you know, my, my own, you know, journey in that sort of evangelism training, the reason for me as a pastor, and I encourage all the pastors and church leaders who are watching, you know, you can't leave what you won't live. So don't go to your church and say, let's read a, reach out for Jesus if you're not engaging your neighbors. But what I've sought to do is I have eight neighbors within two houses of me. I've been in seven of eight of their homes. Uh, one of them doesn't really like us. But anyway, I've been in seven of eight of their homes and, and actually shared the gospel. Not invited them to church, not, not, uh, not, not said nice things. We've done all those things. Right? We invited them to church. We're friends. But to actually share the good news of the gospel, Jesus' death on the cross, an invitation to receive them by grace and through faith. And so what I would say is I think everybody watching, if people are passionate and concerned, and they would be if they're watching this, this program, this video, I think all of us need to model that by intentionally doing it ourselves. And then if you're watching, you're probably a pastor or church leader, uh, at least some form of leader in the church but then encouraging others. Get, get resources, get training, so you can be more effective in showing the, sharing, showing the sharing love of Jesus to that world around us. That's great. You know, there's this guy named Tom Rainer. I don't know if you ever heard of heard him. Of him. And, and he wrote this book called uh, um, Surprising Insights of the Unchurched, right? Which I've given away. I can't even tell you how many copies. But he basically said what you just said, the authenticity of the pastors first, and then the imperative of personal evangelism. These are both surprising insights that, they, that he came up as he spoke to people who were unchurched and talked about what was it that caused them to join the particular place that they did. I think that's a, a great word. You know, one of the things, one more question, in your role as a pastor, you have a number of people in your pews. What have have you seen happen in the lives of those that have got engaged in coming up with some method by which they can personally evangelize? What sort of change do you see in them? I mean, it's great to see the numeric growth and whatnot, but isn't there a spiritual growth that happens in the lives of the people that will get engaged? No question. I, and I can see that. I see that pastorally. As a pastor, I've seen that. So I think of, I lead a small group in my home, and I think of uh, Bruce, who was there last night and when we had our small group. And I had the privilege to see him trust Christ, uh, to be baptized, and and, uh, and, and he is, and his wife, Beth. And, and now to see him evangelize his coworkers is really a, a beautiful and remarkable thing. And what happens is there's a boldness that comes from that. And so, and it's a, it's a boldness born of relationship with Christ. So I see that pastorally, but I also see that as a, as a researcher, as a head of Lifeway Research. When we did our uh, transformational discipleship assessment, we studied 4,000 people in English, Spanish, and French, and found eight attributes of discipleship. And, and, and clearly the issue of evangelism keeps coming up. But what's fascinating is, because we both share this passion for evangelism, it's not just that it keeps coming up, but it keeps correlating with other things. It's people who are engaged in sharing the gospel are engaged in reading the word. People are engaged in the gospel are denying themselves. Uh, these are not things that happen like in a vacuum. These things are connected. And 
in research terms, they form a scale. They, they have the factor loads. I probably research people got excited by that. Uh, but what it basically means is these things are related, and you want people who are winsomely and boldly sharing the gospel because it impacts every area of spiritual life. 